Hello and welcome back to Robbie's Arcade. Today I want to talk about X-Men vs Street Fighter. The very first versus game between two different genres. I know you're thinking it's bloody commonplace and you're right. Here we are in 2017 and X vs Y or whatever has been going on for so long. But now of course if we go back all the way to when this was released in 1996. I can tell you right now that the idea of two genres being a crossover in an arcade format was relatively unheard of. It started happening more and more in comic books. Frank Miller's um, DC uh, Batman comic, Batman v Superman, or a Dark Knight Rises, uh, Returns, whatever it's called. Um, these were examples that were already quite common in the comic fraternity, and a little bit on TV as well. There'd been a couple of crossovers there. But the idea in gaming, to this extent, had never been heard of. Now, Capcom have got obviously huge names in the um, fighting arena, covering you know the usual Street Fighter games, and there was Final Fight, I believe, and then of course they've been Street Fighter Alpha or Zero, depending on where you live. But what they did here is they included with this the idea of their another license they had on the books, of course, the Marvel series. They'd already had Marvel superheroes and X-Men: Children of the Atom, so it became only natural the idea of having these two great AAA licenses and putting them together. Hence X-Men vs Street Fighter, the very first of its kind and something that's been emulated and copied every year I reckon for the last 20 years. I mean soon we're going to be seeing the latest version of Marvel vs Capcom uh, for PS4 and Xbox One. I still can't get over that name. But um, ultimately what you're looking at here is a huge step in the field of one-on-one -on -one combat and particularly on an arcade system where you could have two versus two in a tag team setup. In fact, there were some copies of this arcade machine that had four controllers, although well, they were quite a few and far between. So you could have four people, two against two, combating one another. Now, what we've got here is the arcade version of the game. There is the Saturn and the PlayStation 1 version, which we'll talk about later on. But straight away from that demo running in the background, you can see um, one, obviously, the two, uh, where the plot fitted into this, by the way, I can, almost the entire plot is based on the X-Men uh, universe. Nothing I can see on the Street Fighter universe. But on top of that, you had everything from uh, tag team combat, you had uh, the super combo system refined, so everyone had multiple super combos. On top of that, you had tag teaming and working together on super combos involving two people. You had super cancels, you had, and every fight was one round. So instead of multiple rounds, you had one round and two health bars in the, file, in the form of two people. So do you know what, I've banged on about it largely enough. Let's get some credits in here and start playing. So straight away I can tell you right now, there was a secret character in this, namely Akuma, who we're going to play. Um, and with Akuma we'll go over the next man. Again, I've mentioned it on a previous video, but Juggernaut is still considered one of the cheapest characters in the X-Men universe of games. And that's largely because he featured as a boss in X-Men Children of the Atom. And now he's in this, he is just too overpowered with that 2-3 um, hit ignoring. So you have to hit him at least two to three times for a hit to register and make him stagger. But on top of that, you've got Akuma, who was always, again, considered one of the cheapest, nastiest characters in the Street Fighter universe. So let's try this, let's get this going, shall we? Again, hugely responsive Street Fighter game. After a few days of playing the likes of Street Fighter 1 and Street Fighter 2, it's so good to play a particularly responsive Street Fighter game. Now let's see if we can perform this double combo together. There we go. Bye bye Dal Sim. I'm sure that caused enough damage to you, mate. As you can see, it's this is almost an unfair pairing of uh, Juggernaut and um, Akuma. Oh, that isn't to say the game isn't putting up a fight. There was even a, um, a move, oh dear, where you would project your opponent into the air. Wait a minute, let's get this sorted. Sorry, that was a bit cheap, that wasn't it? I was just trying to do the super move, but as you can see, the combat system is very refined. When you've seen some of the other videos here on Robbie's Arcade, you do immediately see a distinction about the ease of performing those moves, certainly. Oh, a little bit of coffee there, why not? 
So let's have a look, Cammy and Rogue. The gruesome twosome, no less. Let's have a look here, right. Again, me and my brother, uh, North Woolwich this time, we would spend ridiculous months sums of money and time um, on this game. And there goes one of, I would say, the cheapest super combo. And of course, we've got the groundbreaking as well, something that later games on other systems would claim to be a huge innovation. Oh dear, missed, absolute miss. I'm not even sure I'm gonna need Juggernaut in this fight, to be honest. Oh dear. Anyone familiar with the X-Men universe will know that Rogue's kind of got a half power, if such a thing makes sense. Oh, there we go. Goodbye. So again, it's as you can see, it's very playable. Um, real quick, let's get some facts about this game. Um, so straight away, as already mentioned, the game was released in 1996. It was released in Japan and very quickly afterwards in America. But there was a slight delay bringing the game to the UK, although it did pop up in places uh, in the United Kingdom over time. Uh, on top of that, the game was re-released afterwards on home consoles for both the Saturn and the PlayStation. However... Due to this kind of technology and this style of game being very much in its infancy, the game on both systems was hobbled in its own special way. If you look at the Saturn version, you actually needed to buy an additional RAM cartridge just for the game because it had so much going on. And if you tried to play the game without the additional 4 meg uh, RAM cartridge, you couldn't swap characters. And likewise, a lot of the um, effects were dumbed down. Likewise, the PlayStation 1 version didn't have crossover characters at all. It had poor sprite capabilities as well as low RAM on the original PlayStation meant um, that the PlayStation just could not cope with the idea of two, you controlling two characters and moreover four different characters on screen. Although luckily there was a, there, although you didn't have the tag team feature, you could enter a cheat into the game so you could select two characters and two against two and utilize the tag team capability. And it was the only way the limited hardware on the PlayStation could let you have four characters accessible at any given time, but it had to be two and two. Um, lastly, it was hosted on the CP System 2, the system made famous for Street Fighter 2 Turbo. Uh, and lastly, as already mentioned, Akuma is a secret character, although there are different cheats available both in the arcade and the home versions for alternate costumes on individual characters, such as Chung Lee getting her original Street Fighter 2 outfit. So let's go back into the game, shall we? The last boss in this game, of course, is um, Juggernaut. Oh, not Juggernaut, what am I saying? Apocalypse. Um, well, and I made a mistake in a previous video where I said the last boss in Marvel vs. Street Fighter was Apocalypse, but it wasn't. It was Onslaught, a relatively um, underused character in the entire um, X-Men gaming fraternity. So let's have a quick look here. And here we go. This is Apocalypse. Kind of miss having the joystick of the arcade, actually, because this controller does not do this game justice course tech kit so you could recover from things quite easily let's see if that's going to make a difference to goal cyclops why not almost feel guilty to them let's let juggernaut get a go and there goes cyclops second up round two and there we go another stage transition but this one's a little bit more um, obvious and not subject to stuff happening within the round. Again, uh, as mentioned in my other videos, um, me and my brother, when we used to play this game, we would always find that one of us, like in all beat em up games, someone would play as the strong but slow, and the other one would play as the weak but fast. It was kind of the dynamic we established very early on. And I think. Most gamers had that kind of gaming layout with either their friends or family. So this is what we're, I'm witnessing here is just a throwback to myself as a child. Now, most people that were around when this game was released must be at least in their 30s and 40s now. And games like this, people take for granted that games like these even existed. Because when you know when this technology was first around it was truly groundbreaking and the idea of playing something like this at your in your home let alone 
recording it on the likes of YouTube, such as I'm doing now, was relatively unheard of. And not just, you know, broadcast that sort of thing. If we wanted to watch games being played, we would watch Games Master, we'd watch Bad Influence, and a multitude of different places where this kind of information was uh, seen and available. But that still didn't deter us from trying to complete these games in arcades, and I think that's definitely something that these days is missing. Particularly given that ending sequences on games now are pretty poor when you look at um, other games. I mean, everyone has an ending sequence in the old Street Fighter games. You, would, you wouldn't dream of having a beat-em-up game in the 90s that didn't have an ending sequence for every character. I mean, the, the, the furore and the flack you'd receive would be incredible. Let's see if Ro... I'm pretty sure I've already faced Rogue, haven't I? It's a bit cheaper, the game, to put the same enemy twice. And I'll be honest, I'm sick of hitting this chick with this move without it hitting. Do you know what? Shall we try for a double? Let's try if we can get a double. We're going to need a little bit here. Look, do you know what? Let's give him a little bit of a breather. There we go. We've got our double. Now, is the game going to let me do a double? I don't think it's going to. No. Do you know what? We'll have to give it a miss, I guess. Oh, no. That can't be good. I think it might be curtains for our hero. Oh no, unless, I'll be honest, that was incredible she got that block out there. Same again, this is the luckiest Chung Li I've ever faced. Oh no. Did anyone see that energy bar? If I know I'm playing this live, but do me a favour, go back and let me know just how quickly that energy bar was depleted, given that I blocked. Now this has got to be curtains for her, but I can't see Juggernaut defeating Rogue. This could we could be seeing the end of the video, and of course we are. So there you have it. That is X Men versus Street Fighter. Oh my God, that felt so good to play. I'm having so many throwback moments to being a child. It's unbelievable. But bottom line, this was where it all began. All the versus games that we know and love, and the ones that we love the most. So if you want to see another game here at Robbie's Arcade and you've got a suggestion, maybe something I've missed, pop it in the comments. But otherwise, I hope you enjoyed it. And don't forget to click like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.